is coming to take over the world. Okay, but what does it know about mushrooms? So unless you've been living under a rock during the last year, you will have seen and heard an awful lot about AI, whether it's ChatGPT or video creators, image creators, a whole bunch of different things that you can use AI to do. In this video though, I want to focus in on what does it know about mushrooms? We're going to be finding out how good it is at identifying things from photographs and also just going to be asking a bunch of questions around how to grow mushrooms and cultivate mushrooms and find out really if it can be a useful tool for us to utilize in our knowledge and understanding of growing mushrooms. So let's dive right in. So first up, AI identification of mushrooms is something that's been around for a few years already, especially in the form of mobile apps. Maybe you've used one yourself. Now with this, it's a pretty simple process. You just download an app and there are quite a few out there. Um, and most of them enable you to just snap a quick picture of the mushroom that you see in front of you from a few different sides, you know, from the side, the top, and often it will ask you to do it from underneath as well. Um, and then it will, from that, work out what it is. And in this case, it's got it right. It's picked out that this is Reishi, Ganoderma species. And then it goes on with a whole bunch of information, other photos of that variety. So this is actually a pretty good app um, and it does the job quite well. Other apps, you can just use it almost like a, a textbook. You know, it has different categories. You can say, I'm looking at a bracket fungus and it will throw up pictures of most commonly seen bracket fungi in the wild. Um, so it's a pretty useful thing, but you wouldn't want to rely on it to eat a mushroom until you're absolutely sure uh, that you've identified it correctly because, you know, a picture can get things wrong. So normally you'd also then look to go to a book in order to just make sure that you've got the right mushroom before you go ahead and eat it. Although that app was pretty good, there's a whole bunch of things that it can't see. So it can't see, you know, how the gill is attached to the stem. That's something normally that you have to slice a mushroom open in half. And then you can tell you know, where the gills and how they join onto the stem of the mushroom is one of the key identification features. So normally you'd find that kind of information out in a really good mushroom ID textbook. And traditionally this has been the way of course of foraging that you go out in the wild, you find what you've got and you go through a list of identifying features and at the end of that, you should then be able to work out what mushroom you've got with a reasonable amount of accuracy. So we'd always highly recommend that even if you use an app like that, that you use a mushroom ID textbook as well. However, it's now come to light that there are a bunch of mushroom ID books online which were written by AI. Now you can see where I'm going with this here. There are questions around how accurate the knowledge is inside of a book that's been written by a machine that's never even seen a mushroom in the world before, let alone knows exactly how to identify it. And as we'll see in a minute, when you start asking ChatGPT questions about mushrooms, it's not actually all that knowledgeable. So, um, this is a serious risk, you know, if people go out based on a book like this and they start foraging and potentially eating mushrooms from a book that is written by an author that has been made up with credentials that have been made up with information that's been sourced from AI that doesn't really know what it's talking about. This is potentially lethal. Somebody could pick up a mushroom that is actually deadly, misidentify it and end up dying from it. So please, if you go out foraging and you want to use a textbook, uh, source a book that's been written by an expert, a well-known and renowned expert. Don't just believe a little uh, spiel about who the author is. Have a look at them, do a bit of research and check that they are a real person with real knowledge before you go out and forage like that. So let's take a look at how much AI actually knows about mushrooms. And to do that, I'm going to jump on to ChatGPT, which is probably the most famous AI language model out there. And I'm going to ask it a bunch of questions about mushrooms. Some a bit simpler and some I'm going to test it out and uh, see if it knows the answer to something a little bit more complicated as well. Let's jump on and have a look. All right, so let's kick things off with a nice easy question. What is mycelium? You should definitely know the answer to that. I'm guessing we'll get something like an encyclopedia style answer. Yeah, so it's gone into something like that, telling us uh, vegetative part of a fungus, thread-like structures with hyphae, it is the fungal equivalent to plant roots, etc. So this is a pretty textbook answer. Most of what I can see here is absolutely correct. So as I expected, it's done perfectly fine with an answer that you would find in a textbook or encyclopedia since that's what its knowledge is based upon, uh, you know, all the world's text is what it is using to base its answers off of. So let's ask it another question that it really should know the answer to. What is the most expensive mushroom in the world? 
and it is said that the most expensive mushroom in the world is the Matsutake mushroom, also known as the pine mushroom or king of mushrooms, uh, which is highly sought after in Japan. Now that's true, this is highly sought after in Japan and it is a very expensive mushroom and it does give us the key reasons why it's expensive. Um, primarily that its rarity, the fact that it only grows in the wild is not easy to cultivate, but it is also very popular. So those two forces uh, push the price up. However, I know that this is not the most expensive mushroom in the world because we researched and wrote an article on this recently on our website. And although Matsutake was in the top three most expensive mushrooms in the world, it's not the most expensive. So typical price for Matsutake mushrooms fresh is between a thousand and two thousand dollars per pound. And that is in the same ballpark, but not necessarily more than European white truffles, which frequently sell between $1,000 and $4,000 per pound. So uh, European white truffles, you would say most of the time are more expensive than Matsutake mushrooms, but you know, sometimes they might sh change hands for roughly the same sort of price. If you get a white truffle slightly cheaper in a year where there were lots of white truffles, for example, their price would be slightly lower. It might be roughly the same sort of price. However, both of those are completely outdone by the most expensive mushroom in the world, which is actually uh, one of the cordyceps mushrooms, cordyceps sinensis, the uh, often called Yatsa gunba mushroom. Now this is a different variety of cordyceps, often called wild cordyceps, uh, because it so far hasn't been worked out how to cultivate it reliably, and hence also why the price. So it's extremely expensive, $50,000 per pound. Um, far, far more expensive than a Matsutake mushroom or a white truffle. It's extremely rare. It has a lot of health properties um, and is an aphrodisiac. So it is something that's very popular in Asia, but very hard to find. So um, this is the most expensive mushroom in the world. So I'm afraid ChatGPT has failed on even just a fairly simple task, really, um, of telling us what is the most expensive mushroom in the world. All right, let's give it another question. I'm going to ask it, what are the easiest mushrooms to grow? White button mushrooms, oyster mushrooms, shiitake, king oyster, enoki, lion's mane, maitake. All right, so this is an interesting one. So it has got some things right here. I mean, oyster mushrooms are definitely one of the easier to grow. White button mushrooms, mm, relatively easy, although the fact you often are composting the manure before inoculation. It's not the easiest method to grow uh, mushrooms for a beginner, um, in any case. Shiitake mushrooms um, can be fairly easily grown on hardwood logs, sawdust blocks. They're slightly more picky. Um, I wouldn't say it's a beginner's option, but you know, it's not, not rocket science as well, so that's, that one's fine. But here's where we get in, into the interesting ones here then. So they've listed king oyster mushrooms, which I wouldn't say are the easiest to grow for beginners. They're saying they're adaptable and can be grown on various substrates, making them a good choice. Uh, king oyster mushrooms are quite picky, especially in the fruiting stage in particular. They very often end up with bacterial blotch if you don't have your growing conditions right. So I wouldn't say it's the easiest of mushrooms to grow. And then down here, they've listed maitake mushrooms as one of the easiest to grow. And that is definitely not the case. Maitake are probably one of the more complex mushrooms to grow. They have a multi-step fruiting process. They're quite sensitive to environmental changes. They don't like growing in the same room as other species. So that's definitely not one that you would add to a list of the easiest mushrooms to grow. So I'm afraid chat GPT, you've got that one wrong as well. So I've just asked it another question here. How do you grow reishi antlers? It should be a fairly simple answer, but um, it's failed on this one, I'm afraid as well. I'm not aware of any specific term or technique related to growing reishi antlers. Well, anyone that's been interested in growing medicinal mushrooms or just looking around anything to do with reishi on the internet will come across reishi antlers. They're one of two main forms that they're grown in and they're visually spectacular to look at. So a lot of people will have come across them and um, I'm surprised that ChatGPT doesn't even know anything about them. So it doesn't know anything about them. It's just giving us some basic um, general guidance on how to grow reishi mushrooms, which is also fairly vague. It says things like uh, prepare a suitable grown substrate, typically a mix of hardwood sawdust and other ingredients. Um, other ingredients obviously being pretty vague there, and it doesn't tell us anything about hydration of substrate or anything like that. So 
pretty basic advice again and of course not really even answering the question that we're looking at. So after we've looked through that it's pretty clear that AI doesn't really know all that much about mushrooms. It's pretty good with certain types of knowledge, you know, the sort of thing that you're going to find in an encyclopedia or widely written about online. Facts is pretty good at, but as soon as you go beyond that into something which is maybe a bit more subjective or perhaps requires actual direct experience or knowledge, it really starts to fall apart. It starts giving you really vague answers, it gives you inaccurate answers, and it's pretty clear that it doesn't really know what it's talking about. And that gets to the crux of the problem, I guess, is that AI and these language models are really just only able to regurgitate what they've already learned elsewhere. And there's not a huge amount of written knowledge when it comes to the field of mushroom cultivation. A lot of the knowledge is really tied up in individual people who have got years and years of experience in cultivating and growing mushrooms. And really that still is very much the best way to learn. You really want to learn from actual people who have got that lived experience and knowledge. Having said that, it's really early days with AI. I mean, this type of AI has only been around for a year or so. It's gonna get better and better over time and perhaps it will become something that's much more useful in our learning processes going forward. And it's something that we're interested to play and develop with as well. So we're looking into training an AI based off of our own knowledge. You know, we can ask it questions and correct it when it gets things wrong, teach it the nuances, and it can begin to embody that knowledge and it could be a rather useful tool we're thinking for our online course community as a supplementary tool alongside our main lessons. So, um, you know, if you're in our online course community, keep out an eye for that in the year ahead as we start to experiment with it. If we find it's any good, we'll put it in there as a tool for you to utilize. And speaking of community, there's really no substitute to learning from a community of experienced mushroom growers, somewhere we can go and ask questions and get things answered. And if you're interested in joining a group of growers like that, then head over to growcycle.com forward slash go, where we have a thriving community of low-tech mushroom farmers in more than 100 countries around the world. And we'd love you to come and join us. So I'd also like to hear, you know, what are your thoughts on AI and how it's going to impact on things going forward? Is it all just a load of hype or is it something that's going to cause monumental change for us all? Let us know in the comments section below. Thanks a lot for joining us for today's video. I'll see you in the next one.